Um, so I wanted to show you this painting um, so you can start to get a sense of what cool and warm color means as you look out your window, right? Check out that shadow that the door is, is in and is casting, right? It's, it's, it's purple, basically, um, whereas the outside is yellow. And so the warmer outside Kind of contrast with the cool shadows of the interior and you create you create space that way um, you create a sense of near and far that way um, does anyone know this artist you can just yell them out if you do I bet some of you are just shy. Um, it is, of course, Edward Hopper, who you may know. Um, again, check out the shadow here. That shadow, right, it's not just gray, it's kind of purpley gray. Um, whereas the light on that table, again, very warm, very yellow, this light on, that, on the edge of that little piece of the building, kind of orange, right? Um, and that's, again, how you create direction in your painting. Separate things that might be in the front in the painting from things that are further back. The sky, for instance. One thing when you, when you paint your skies tonight, they get a little lighter towards the horizon. They're deeper blue towards the top, and they get lighter towards the horizon. So um, instructions for today, and these are suggested. Um, have your supplies out. And that would be brushes, palette, primary colors of paint plus brown and white, your surface, cup of water, paper towels, scrap paper, and pencil. Okay. Um, secondly, use a viewfinder to help you prioritize your composition. Um, either an actual one, which is, I just took a, an old scrap painting and made, uh, I first folded it in half. I did two cuts and then I cut up to create a rectangle. Now what you do is this, you look, you look through it, right? You, fr you can frame the world through this. And depending on how far or close you, you hold it, you get a whole different composition. So what I would recommend is if you do want to do this, you hold it up to the window, what you're looking at. And you move it around, you move it front, you move it back. And that will help you select what you want. You can also do this. This is a great... Um, cheap way to do just what I showed you with the paper. Um, and then ask yourself questions like, what am I drawn to while I'm looking out of this window? What's the color like? Um, what I want you to do is to aim for something in your painting to be specific. All right, again, you're going to be, it's going to be a lot of, especially when we live as urban dwellers, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of development, a lot of color signage things like that but something you want to you want to be specific in your painting it does it should not be all things you don't have the time for that tonight um so so basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just, i'm gonna keep reading this will summarize what we're gonna do and then we'll just jump into it and i'll 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 um reiterate these things as you guys are painting um so then after you've sort of thought about composition on scrap paper, you can do a couple thumbnail sketches in pencil. It's an optional thing. And once you feel like you've got an idea for the painting, feel free to begin immediately with paint on your painting surface. Um, visually analyze what you're looking at and mix a couple colors that feel like the ones you're seeing. Okay, maybe it's just a couple colors. Maybe it's sort of a general sky color and a general build, building color, right? You're not going to be painting the individual building first. You can paint general big areas. Um, this stage is a big one and where you want to push against uncertainty the most. Think about that. You want to lay in large areas of color to start building up the bones of your painting. You will feel uncertain at this stage, right? When you've got just this blank thing. That's the, that's, that's the stage where you probably want to be working the fastest, actually. It's counterintuitive. Um, no need for details. Don't worry about it looking right at this stage. The rest of the painting process can be summed up by two ideas. Being brave enough to make new decisions, for example, painting over things, 
and then focusing in on what is most important to you in the painting. For instance, the light on the roof, shape of a church, or the kind of emotional mood you're wanting to kind of transfer to the way you paint the scene. Those, those two things, once you've gotten past the kind of lay-in phase. Um, through this process, remember to take plenty of little breaks to check in with your progress and the situation you're translating into paint, like what do I want to do next? What is similar or different about what I painted compared to what I see? What's changing about what I'm looking at? Literally the, the world, you're gonna watch the world change as you paint, right? Pay attention to that. And then how can the painting decisions I make reflect those changes, right? So this is, this is challenging, but it'll help you open up, keep mixing colors to reflect the changes that you're seeing. And yes, if you've done this before, perhaps you've heard the advice to paint in the order of background, middle ground, and then foreground from back to front. And sure, this makes a certain kind of practical sense. Just remember, you don't need to be bound to that though. In other words, if you painted something that was supposed to be behind something else, um, but you realized you needed to put something in the back again, just, just do it, right? You don't need to finish everything on one plane before you move to the middle, before you move to the foreground but it, can, it might help you start. And then of course, enjoy your experience. Um, I've given you a lot of ideas, but enjoy the experience. Um, treat it as a meditation or a celebration or research or play. Um, whatever painting is for you, um, embrace that. This is, this is beautiful that we get to do this at all and to do it sort of in a community like this is even better. Um, that's, so that's the presentation I have. Does anyone have any questions right off the bat? Oh, wait, we have a question about the viewfinder. Okay, go is for it. Is it just casual, like just a random size or does it have to match the size of our canvas or? Yeah, so the viewfinder, it helps if the viewfinder is in fact uh, small. This is, uh, I would say this is like three inches by like two and a half. So the viewfinder, has, the size of the viewfinder has nothing to do with the size of the actual canvas or, or paper surface you're painting on. I, I recommend this particular kind of size for, for the opening. The, 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 the paper can be any size. So of course, feel free to to chime in, to show me your progress, to show your, your peers your progress. Um, I wanna hear from you, any things that you're running into. Um, but mainly I just want you to get started. Now do you, okay. um, yeah. when do you want me to spotlight people's video? Um, will you just kind of let me know or will they let me know? Because right now yours is a sure. default. We're, we're seeing your screen more than, more than you. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take this off. Okay. Does spotlight mean like record someone else? Um, no, basically how Zoom normally works is when someone is talking, Zoom right. highlights that person. But because you're the teacher, you're automatically, I automatically highlighted you, hence the spotlight. Square. Okay. So I don't okay. know if you want me to change that for now. So when someone else talks, we see their screen or what you oh. want to do. I mean, I don't know if anyone really wants to be spotlit unless unless they tell us right now or something. Um, I guess if it's possible to just keep it on me. Okay. Um, maybe if I then if there, if someone does show work to their to their screen and they're right. okay with it being spotlit, uh, we can then have that conversation. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So you're all free to get going. Let me know if you want me to return to that Google Doc with some of the notes and ideas there or images of work. Oh, can I ask you one more question? Yeah, please. Right. Um, so what, like if where we are, the sky is like gray and there's not a lot of light, should we still go with that or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you guys see, remember what I said about the shadows? of gray buildings not looking gray in the painting. They actually like are painted with purples and, and blues and browns. I want you to try to find those colors in the clouds. 
Okay. Or, the, or if this if the sky has kind of got that plane thing, um, maybe there are um, gray itself, right? Has an amazing spectrum of cool grays and warm grays. To 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 make them cooler or warmer, you would add you know blue or red. You'd add different colors to your base gray. And hopefully, what I can do is too is as I as I mix colors, I'll I'll do some shots of of my mixing. So I'll show you that. Does that make sense, Cecilia? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to open my window, which means that you're going to see a lot of light because I'm looking west. Which means that I'm watching the, the sunset. Not a bad way to live on Tuesday. If, you, uh, if you've worked with acrylic before, you know that uh, less is more when it comes to squeezing out paint. I see, I do it myself too. I, I just see students uh, take way too much at the beginning and then you've lost a bunch of paint at the end. You can always add more. At the same time, you don't need to be stingy about it either. I, I guess I see the opposite problem too where people just do like a the tiniest rice grain of paint. You don't want rice, but you do want, uh, you don't want uh, a quarter, a quarter size might be too much to start. Maybe like a nickel. And I'm going to post my uh, my email address. Uh, I encourage the last group in the previous class to send images of their work. Um, op totally optional, it's up to you. I just love to see how people treat these kinds of educational experiences. If you want further guidance, I, I love talking about painting through email too and, and, and give you a little advice and share back. So feel free. The nice thing, one reason why I suggested just the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, and then brown and white, is it really forces you to then mix other colors like green and purple and gray. You might be wondering, well, how do I get gray with blue, yellow, and red? Well, the brown, if you have the brown and the white, those are the key things to to help the gray. But what you would do is you, you would do a combination of your primary colors, all three, in different amounts, it's up to you. And then you would add, you know, maybe that little bit of brown and of course white. And that's what I'll, I'll, I'll show that. And if you have black, go for black. 
I've opened up a lot about using black. Um, just one of those things that was, you know, for sort of traditionalist reasons seen as kind of uh, a faux pas in academic painting. Sorry, can I ask you one more question? Yeah, please. So my view is in the far background, a grayish sky, and I understand about playing with the colors of gray, but it's yeah, just little like slivers. And then the, it's really okay. the background is like trees, like a couple trunks and mostly green. So would I okay. paint the little holes first or what would I do? Do you know what I mean? To get the sky? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I mean, I would, I would say, first what you want to do, of course, is you want to say like, what's the region? What's the, what's the light doing? Is the, is the, is the sky really bright compared to the trees being dark? You know, that, that kind of thing. Um, and then that will help you decide what colors you want to mix. Then, yeah, I, I would paint the sky, brush that sky in fully, fully, oh. fully. Okay. And then, um, start to sort of smush some tree shapes over that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The gray is all three colors in equal amounts? Uh, usually a little more blue. More blue, okay. Yeah. Um, and, then of, and then your white, you would add. I will say, I, I, color mixing is a lot like cooking for me. You know, I don't, I don't really resort to recipes, per se. You know, I, I, I think some people have, some people do. But being open to modifying the color as you go is really important. And just mixing in little bits at a time. Definitely um, having more than one brush is really helpful because you can get different shape, different size paint strokes with different brushes. And you can have one brush for like warm colors and one brush for cool colors. That can be really nice. quite technologically outfitted for advanced Zoom art classes. And Cecilia, you might like consider mixing three different grays and then using either scrap paper or some corner of your canvas to kind of experiment to place those grays down next to each other and see like, oh, this one with more red, on it, red in it looks interesting compared to this more green gray. It's really white gray. <laughs> like it's super whitely bright gray. It's not white gray. It's like yeah, so maybe it's not, maybe, maybe this is like the least important part of your painting in a way, right? Because it's, if there's really that little optical color in it, you just brush that, that maybe it's a mostly, mostly, mostly white, right? And maybe you want to get, really get into those tree shapes. It's all, it's all about what you see. It's not a very sunny day. Where, where are you folks again? Seattle. Oh gosh, I forgot that you're all the way in Seattle. Wow. Wait, were you there last week? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, 
I just can't believe you um you knew about this class from Seattle. I grew, my, my mom grew up in Marion. Ah, that's your Pennsylvania connection. Yeah. Is it true or is it a, a stereotype that Seattle weather is kind of like England or London weather? Kind of dreary. It's true. It's very rainy. <laughs> very rainy. <laughs> it doesn't rain a lot, but in winter, it, it's great. So in winter, you're getting more, are you getting more snow or more, more rain? It's snow for a few days, then it goes back to rain. Uh, it rains the same amount as New York, but over a longer period of time. It rains the same amount as New York, but over a longer period of time. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it's like spread out smaller amounts. It's dribbling rain. <laughs> Is it happening right now? No, but it was in the morning. That explains why our porch is very wet. Mm. It was mm -hmm. wet. We've had some incredible thunderstorms here in Philadelphia. In fact, many, many people in our uh, our audience here may have experienced some disastrous ones. Actually, there were some a lot of downed trees. Sounds like for you two, um, you want to put the most effort into mixing a variety of greens. I mean, I assume that's the color of the, the foliage, some kind of green. Yeah, it's very dark. It's very dark, right. So like maybe that dark, maybe you, um, maybe you have some greens that are more like gray greens for the shadowy areas. Maybe you have some purpley greens that might come off as like brown. And then, of course, you do want like a beautiful, crisp green green, if you, if you see it, that is, if the light's hitting any of it. Here's just like a little uh, swatch of grays. Thank you. Can you hold it up for one more minute? Wait, I'm going to take a screen. Can you hold it up for a little longer? Yeah. These are grays that are like definitely leaning towards other colors, right? Got it. I got the colors. You can put them down. So it's seven eleven. Maybe you are. Maybe you've chosen something that stands out and you've decided maybe on the limits of your composition, like how you're gonna frame it inside your paper or your canvas. Maybe you've started sketching with the paint. Maybe, you've, maybe you're doing thumbnail sketches. Um, you can be farther along in that process too. Some people just like to really slather on the paint like cement i'm all i'm all for it but if you're if you're in in the painting process keep especially this 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 uh phase keep asking yourself like what am i what am i drawn to um what is it that i'm painting here
one thing, uh, another tip for the stage where you're like just trying to get something on that paper or that canvas, I find it's helpful to squint your eyes or just make your, well, you can do this, or you can make your vision go blurry. If you can do that without squinting your eyes, you can cross your eyes, <laughs> that helps. Make your vision blurry. And that will basically, what that does is it helps reduce the range of what you're seeing. Um, it helps reduce the range of the colors and reduce the range of the tones you're seeing. And then, and then therefore, if you're looking like that, then you can more fully paint an area without worrying about oh, every little um, nuance in that area. So squint your eyes, blur your vision, Just show you the size of the brushes that I have. I have like two main sizes, something small and then something medium. I do have uh, kind of an in-between, it's a little bit larger. This one's great for skies, big areas of tree, mountains, you know, the bigger area, bigger sides of houses. It's a good sort of, I'm starting this painting brush. Wow, someone's in Tasmania. Get out of here. Like the Tasmania? <laughs> There's no Tasmania, Pennsylvania, right? That I'm uh, <laughs> forgetting. No, that would be Tasmania, Australia. Amazing. Well, how did you find out about this class? Uh, event by. Yeah. Well, welcome. Thanks. So what, what are you looking at? What kind of landscape are you looking at or, or setting? Um, it's pretty dismal outside. It's absolutely freezing, but the landscape's pretty beautiful. It's lots of mountains. I've got um, mountains surrounding our place. Yeah, it's nice. Oh my gosh. Wow. I guess that can be intimidating to paint. I don't know if you've done it before, but yeah, just to be surrounded by that kind of majestic yeah. splendor. That's cool. Thank you for uh, describing that. That sounds amazing. So, is it your winter right now? Yeah. Okay. Just started winter. Yep. Yep. Had a couple of minus degrees already. Oh my gosh, it's surreal to imagine. Yeah. Hence the 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 beanie and the and the wrap around. So you want to, yeah, you, you will want to, um, like you're, if you're looking at snow, snow can be challenging for people to paint because they think, oh, it's just white. What am I going to do? What, what do I have to paint? Um, again, the shadows on the snow can tell you everything. Um, a lot of times snow has these amazing blue shadows on it. Um, and and the other way about thinking about snow is the edges of the snow, um, where the snow meets anything, meets, meets ground or meets structure, that will create some kind of darker area. And you can focus on those areas. Um, so those are two tips for snow. I'd love to see, I'd love to see what you come up with so towards the end. It makes me realize that many of you may not even be from Philadelphia. Most of you. I'm from Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Oh, wow. Yeah.
Don't you, are you in an urban area? Or a suburb or? I'm in a suburb, but um, a lot of my friends were in the urban area. One, my son's best friend was right next to the third precinct that burned down and his oh, side wow. house got melted. He left right away, but um, still scary. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, it's ground zero, for sure. Yeah, ground zero, yep. Well, not, not to bring politics too much into this, but you, you, Minneapolis has been uh, an inspiration and model for, for much of the world, I, I think, so. That. Definitely exciting to see it unfold right in front of you. I got, uh, yeah, I was just thinking that, yeah. You know, with painting like this, with a la prima painting, um, you do, you're doing a lot of editing as you go, like in real time, constantly. I wanna encourage you all to not um, box yourself in to the composition that you start with. You don't, what you start with doesn't need to be where you end. In other words, if you create some lines, you don't need to just then fulfill those in. I want you to, to be willing to really change things as you go, change the edge of where that building is. It's not quite working there. Push the sky into it a little bit more. Um, something proportionally is off. Just just paint over it. If you're, I assume you're mostly working with water-based paint, so they'll dry quickly. Paint right over it. And it's amazing. You know, you can a painting can happen in ten minutes, or it can happen in, you know, ten years. I've had experiences where I'm painting for like three hours, but the painting doesn't really fall into place until like the final 15 minutes or something like that. So don't don't fret if you're feeling like uh, oh you don't you don't quite have it for a while.
Oh, sorry, can I ask you one more question? Mm -hmm. So is acrylic ever like watercolor in that you can mix on the canvas? Like mix color? Um, yeah, I mean acrylic, if you watered down acrylic so that it is as runny as watercolor, it'll behave like watercolor, definitely. Um, in fact, one thing you can do is if you want to create effects like watercolor, you can first just use a, a brush that just has water on it, brush that water on your surface, and then, um, and then use a watery mixture of your acrylic paint and kind of like drop it into that, that, that water glaze that you did and it'll kind of bloom in the way that watercolor does. Yeah, I do it a lot. And I think um, Charu Puri, um, I remember you from the last class. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't see your uh, message in the chat that time. So I apologize. I wasn't able to answer your question in time. I'm glad to see you back. So funny. I was just, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time thinking about the whole issue of time and um, that I thought that everyone would be experiencing the same uh, time of day, but clearly not. So Tasmania, it is 9.25 a.m. And in Sydney too. <laughs> what was that? And in Sydney too. In, oh, are, is there a Sydney person here? Yes. Amazing. So I'll just show you what I have so far. So it's, it's still pretty broad, but I'm, I'm trying to get these, this church, these two church towers that I'm watching. And I'm just trying to kind of get a sense of the shadow side and the lighter side and playing with the relationships between these greener things and then these more red areas. And then this is going to be where sort of the triangular part of the church, right? The, the lower area, the light's going to be hitting that. So the light's coming from this way. And I'm just playing with that idea for now knowing that we still have an hour. So how did you make the 
of the gray colors that you had on that palette. Yeah. The second one and the last one. Oh God, I covered them up on my painting already. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're more brown. Um, they were grays that were more browny. How do you okay. make it brown? Well, so it was probably more, um, I may have I may have either used more actual brown or I used a little bit more like red and yellow for that orangey color. Okay, wait, yeah, we have, ye oh, we have yellow it's, ochre. It's ochre. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can do that plus some red in, uh, mixed mixed into your your gray blob. Can can do it. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Now, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. I'm not sure how to make that tree on the right pop more to make it look like it's branches. Can you see? The, the, the big evergreen looking yeah. tree, the darker yeah. one. Okay. Um, so do you want to make it look like it's coming forward more that it's in the front yeah. of everything else? Yeah. So what I would, what I would suggest is focus on your light colored paint that's the that's the color of whatever's behind it and try to really add a little more articulation with that lighter green in between some of the darker areas so that you can kind of create the impression of you know the the branches or the leaves of that dark green tree in other words if you paint with the lighter color in between right mm -hmm. that'll make that'll make some of the dark areas then really pop Okay. So and it may just it may not take a lot. It may just be little little bits um of that bright yellow, that bright kind of yellow green that you have. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. That's looking really good though. You you've uh, you've been working really fast. That's great. <laughs> Seizing the day, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fast painter. Yeah. It's great. I'll show you again where I'm at. So I really changed quite a bit in the, in the last like 15 minutes. I really reduced the size of the church that I'm looking at. Um, but I clarified, I think the, the painting a lot more and the, and the light structure and this feeling of a more silhouetted thing against a really bright twi twilight sky. And for me, like getting that, the cross on the top of the facade was important. Um, even though it's a detail, it, it's like such a big part of the image. So I wanted to get it in there sooner than, than the end. If you find your paints get dry and you're on your palette too quickly, um, your only solution is to either paint faster or um, more seriously, get a spray bottle and um, like a little one, keep that nearby and just spritz your palette every, you know, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So remind yourself of the thing we were talking about before, which is the, um, that only a couple of things need to be specific in your painting. It's really easy to um, get a painting really cluttered really quickly. You've got, you got too much on there and sort of it becomes a kitchen sink painting. So if you're in that place and you feel like, what can I do? Maybe you take like a lot of a certain color um, maybe a lighter color that you see around what you're looking and you and maybe you paint out some of what you've done um, push some things back 
you know, lose some things that may allow you to see uh, what, what's really important here. If you haven't yet, this could also be a time for you to play with the different um, thicknesses of the paint. You know, if you've just been using it as like a straight out of the tube or, or maybe slightly watered down, maybe you, um, maybe you completely loosen it up, turn it into a wash. Or maybe you do the opposite and really start like smearing it on. just maybe in certain parts, right? Like sometimes thickening up the paint be a nice way to like make a, a branch really pop forward all of a sudden or a rock or um, brickwork, you know, in a house, you know. Scott? Yeah. What did you just say about brickwork? Oh, just encouraging you to thicken thicken the paint um, for any kinds of details that you might be doing right now. So it could it might include the if you're looking at bricks, using the paint more thickly might make those bricks appear like they're more textured, right? Oh, okay. Whatever has a lot of texture, you can sort of um, increase the thickness of your paint. So you can try that as a as a tool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you share a time zone with the east coast of the US, you know you see you see that the light just changed a lot in the last minute. And things have gotten a lot softer. I would just keep running with that. I mean, I think like if you, if you, first of all, you can't control that. You can't be too anxious about it. And also, um, the light is still going to be coming from the same direction. So at least you have that. It's just that the colors you see are going to be a little bit different. The harshness of the shadows is going to be different. The location of the light is still going to be really similar. We're kind of heading into the final part of this painting. So 25 more minutes to the class ends. Maybe you're taking a break. I don't know if you've taken breaks yet. Definitely, definitely take a break if you need it. So as you know by now, a lot can happen in just a few minutes. Also, Cecilia, um, I'm looking back at the email and I'm not seeing the attachment of Acadia's uh, finger puppet. So if you don't mind sending it again, I'm not, maybe it didn't get attached or if it's not a JPEG, maybe that's an issue. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll take care of that. Okay, I'm excited to see it, yeah. Oh, it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Ooh, sorry, can I ask you one, a question? Yeah, go ahead. 
So it's more just like about supplies. So like the brush yeah. that I have is falling apart. <laughs> what is it? I mean, like we just started doing acrylics recently. What is like a reasonable brush I mean, that doesn't cost a million dollars, but that doesn't fall apart? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm using a brand called Princeton. It's It's been good and, and pretty budget conscious price. Um, you just want to get something that uh, doesn't come in a package of other brushes those are usually the worst and cheapest brushes um you want to buy brushes singly and then um you just want to make sure that they you want to feel them in the store and you want to make sure that the bristles feel strong and that there's many um bristles um really cheap brushes are made with fewer hairs basically the cheapest ones and so they won't stand up to paint they they will break down faster so as, as far as a brand I, i'm looking through some others i i don't besides the princeton which i which i do like i don't have another brand per se but those other pointers i think should be helpful for you too so you said it should be firmer is that what firmer you firmer um seems like it has like a a, a full bristle amount to it yeah Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. There's about 10 to 15 minutes. Maybe it's time to paint that, uh, that bird you've been watching for the last two hours, but haven't had the courage to paint could be made up of just a few strokes. Or in my case, I'll be painting some uh, various kinds of uh, TV satellite dishes, such as the, uh, the roof experience in Philadelphia. I wanna get a couple of those satellite dishes. So I think with our very last moments, I just wanna thank everybody uh, for coming and for painting. Um, feel free to, to share what you created. Uh, I was able to, I think, kind of get the feeling of the last bit of light here in Philadelphia. Kind of got into the way some of the roofs have strange irregular things on them and a little satellite dish. And the warmth, I was really focusing on the warmth of that light. So I just want to wish you all um, a healthy night, a safe night. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts or questions? Oh, great. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, Chris, I think that the light on top of the leaves really helped. Yeah, I think so, too. Is that, uh, oh, Justine's nice. Oh, wow. Beautiful. The bricks are great, yeah. Um, so I think that's it. Oh, wow, who's is that? Those lines. Emily? San Sandy. Sandy. Beautiful work. Nice. Oh, is that Angela? Hi. <laughs> Didn't realize it was you. Oh, good one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love that. The composition is, is awesome. Whoa. Yeah. And that's that shape down there. Very cool. And I like how you really just isolated the detail to the, the foliage. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, y'all. Well, it's been a pleasure. Um, and hopefully we can do this at some other time and I'll see more people from all over the world. <laughs> so, so long, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank Bye. you. Take good care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.